startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Chris is always smiling. This is awesome. Hello and welcome, everybody, to this month in GSA Startups, the first episode actually the january wrap up 2024 chris i think we can still say happy new year right happy new year um from new york city where snow if i look outside is disappearing but there's some some left new york had its first snow in 700 days we also had a lot of snow here, actually quite a lot. It, it completely shut down Germany. But first we had rain that froze over because the, the ground was so cold. And then we had snowfall on it. And then we had the strike of the union uh, from the railway operators, which we are looking at the next. So if you're traveling to Germany, guys, <clears throat> be informed up front. Best follow us on Twitter threats or blue sky where we will also give you some warnings about the weather and strikes and all of that guys if i look a little bit tired i'm really sorry because i am uh we had to move this a little bit into the evening so it's uh 21 35 here for the americans 9 35 p.m i'm up and running for more than 16 hours by now because i do have small kids and i'm really really sorry if i'm a little bit tired to this um here um welcome to our january 2024 news as always wrapping up germany austria and switzerland for the month of january everything since the last news in 30 minutes or less our recording date is january 23rd everything not yet included will be part of our next wrap up to be published on january um february sorry february 29th yes it is a leap year I already did a solo uh, episode reviewing some stuff on 2023. Still some popped up and um, the solo was focused on valuations and investments. And more or less all publications agreed that 2023 was a very bad year for startups. And hopefully we hit rock bottom for the valuations, funding and founding new ones. It should get better as we do in Germany thumbs pressed a little bit more in the positive news our former guest finn finn auto raised 100 million euros unicorn 1,5 card is looking for another 100 million euros unsa loss amounts to 400 million euros and everphone raises 270 million euros despite the dire situation almost two and a half thousand new startups were founded in germany alone in 2023 also, one should take notice of Karlsruhe, a city with a world-class technical university that is home to Interacheck that raised 180 million euros for producing e-fuels. Please take a moment and match all the bad news we have gathered here, weighted against entrepreneurs sticking their heads out and even raising hundreds of millions from investors. Congratulations to all those brave ones. The video podcast will go live on January 25th, except for those who are members of our channel, they will have it earlier. And the audio podcast will also go live on January 25th, 2024. We have to get used to the new year. And you can, of course, tune into our radio station where in December, 170,000 people tuned in. That's totally amazing, Chris. I'm, I'm totally taken aback. Also, you can get our content straight to your inbox. You can either subscribe to our uh, Substack newsletter, which we will take up again, paying promise for January, and our Telegram alert for new content on our Telegram channel. All other channels you can find on Linktree, link down here in the show notes. Our enablers, this recording is supported by Hessen Trade and Invest and the Enterprise Europe Network and StartupRaven.com. Chris, I've been talking so much. You want to take over the top news? Uh, definitely. And I mean, uh, you already hinted to a couple of them. So um, first story we're looking at is the question, what kind of year was 2023 for startups? And you already said it. It was a very bad year, even though many um, 
people hope and imply that we now hit rock bottom already. So, um, yeah, as January is always the time to look back and we are still in January. <clears throat> Um, and Joe, also, you already did an um, especially in-depth review of this on Tuesday. Um, the especially, uh, sorry, for startups around the globe, it was a bad year, but valuations in the U.S. did uh, soar. We have this uh, from an article from Crunchbase as one prominent example where it said, it sounds about right, global startup funding in 2023 clocks in at lowest level in five years. Uh, there are many pieces of research out there that give you the same bottom line. Basically, 2023 was a bad year for startups investing uh, and investing, but many failing startups. Um, we have some more data and stories on them below coming up, um, highlighting a particularly bad year for fintechs and for travel tech. Um, AI and green tech did a bit better, though. Um, I guess if you listen to our podcast regularly, you also got this impression about the German or German Austrian Swiss uh, startup scene already. Overall, uh, one can just be hopeful that we are getting into um, more brighter times. But obviously, as you all know, especially geopolitics puts a lot of question marks behind this hope. Moving on to um, probably a bit more uh, pleasant news. You also already said it. Our guest Finn, um, it's a company based in Munich, raised a hundred million euros in Series C um, to accelerate its shift towards a fully electric fleet. You can learn more about the CEO and the company in a 30 minute episode um, that we had where we do an in-depth interview with them. The link to this is in the show notes. There's a green tech unicorn in Germany called 1,5 Grad, 1.5 degrees. So as you can tell, it is related to climate. Um, they're looking for 100 million euros in venture capital before their planned IPO in 2025. They want to IPO before Easter and are looking for a final liquidity injection. Um, they generated 458 million euros in revenue in 2023 and um, what i guess some people think is unusual for a startup they even were generating a profit of roughly 48 million euros so um when we look at 458 million in revenue and a 48 million euro profit that already sounds like a quite healthy company and um so for example one thing that they are benefiting from is the um German boom in uh, solar tech, but also in heat pumps and in um, charging infrastructure for electrical cars. So um, the, their uh, their outlook is quite optimistic. A bit more optimistic top news about the ecosystem in general is that um, almost 2,500 startups in Germany were founded last year, Berlin and Munich, as markets for them are slowing down. But Hamburg's growth is strong with a plus of 10%. Um, Frankfurt, your hometown, only made it to sixth place. Um, but overall, bottom line here is even though the uh, market environment can be a bit problematic, entrepreneurs are still plowing ahead. And then UNSA loss for uh, 2022 totals 400 million euros. Um, it's a Berlin-based payment company. They registered uh, 400 million euros loss in with 200 million euro revenue um, in 2022. Most of the loss, though, can be attributed to the depreciation of goodwill. Um, UNSA is the result of KKR's buy and build strategy with former Heidel Pay as center. Um, the buying spree may be the main reason for the large loss. By now, UNSA is already sold to Alcentra, uh, Goldman Sachs and Partners Group. And um, one last top news I will give up to you. It's about Everphone. Yes. Uh, one little piece of information here. Goodwill is basically everything you pay above the usual price of a company, meaning the difference between the real company value and let's say the strategic price. And that goodwill goes into your balance sheet. And at one point when you realize you don't, uh, the, the company is not worth that or is not worth as much as you projected in the future, you will need to depreciate this goodwill. And that's basically what made this loss. 
Yes, last story ever phone here, 270 million euros, the Berlin based smartphone and gadget rental company raised 270 million euros from city KFW Phoenix insurance and Capnor. Um, it is here for the funny background story. We re received the press release as so often one week before I added it to the social media tools, uh, um, to be published after the embargo, uh, ended, but sent a message to the PR company that I added it to social media queue that almost made the poor person in charge having a heart attack. Really sorry about that, Jacob. <laughs> we'll share it pretty soon. Um, going back uh, about to housekeeping and time to brag, you can now find us on threads.net as well as on Blue Sky, but since don't to both tools don't work yet with all social media media management backends. There is not yet regular posting there. We are also more than happy to tell you that in December alone, we have reached more than 1.2 million founders and investors alone. Thank you to all the people out there who have been listening to us and supporting us. Thank you very much. Vielen lieben Dank. There's also a lot of lists, podcast charts, and highlights of Startup Radio that would, that we could talk about. If you like to, there's a press release that even Yahoo Finance published. We link it down here in the show notes. And there's also a link to passionfruit.me, our storefront, where you can do some sponsoring with us or look to work with us. Chris, that said, ecosystem is all usually your topic, right? Yes, and uh, passion fruit, not like the actual fruit, but passion, F-R-O-O-T dot M-E slash startup radio. Um, yeah, looking at the ecosystem, um, we do see um, a large report that we at least wanted to mention um, with some global perspective. It's the State of Venture 2023 CB insights global take we have the link to that in the show notes and um we found another article that was tracking travel startup investment trends in 2023 and found that uh, it was another tough year for travel startups ending with 6.3 billion us dollars in investments versus 14 billion in 2022 so um, even though sometimes these things are really depending on a couple of very big deals of course this is a uh a negative trend there. Um, zooming in a bit on Europe, European startups investors look for 2024 for possible IPO options to exit. It's an article um, you can find in the show notes. And uh, we also have an analysis for the fintech sector. 2023 there was a difficult year for European fintech startups. No surprise, but it ends with a glimmer of hope. And what that is, you can also find under the link. Germany, the IFO, uh, IFO business climate tips down, which is one of the, um, I mean, I, I would even say it's one of the leading German economic indicators that people are looking to in terms of how business and, um, certain industries or rather overall, all industries altogether might develop and what market expectations are from the people running the companies. Mm -hmm. It is actually an, a survey of purchasing managers and depending on how they are purchasing and all the orders coming in, they are calculating a business climate. Bless you, my dear. No, I was going to say, and the second one is coming up. EY, a company full disclosure that uh, I've also been working for in the past, published their startup uh, barometer. I was working for the comms department, published their startup barometer. Um, we have covered this in a solo piece by uh, you already on our website. Bottom line there is we, we all hope startup funding in Germany has hit rock bottom already. Green tech in Germany, ups and downs of the finances of the German federal government show signs of a 17% decline in green tech startup investments, right handles blood, rights handles blood. Um, to give you a bit of a background there, the German government basically had um, huge investment programs in mind with an emphasis on climate tech or on climate change investments, basically. But the um, German Supreme Court 
told the government to uh, that they have to stick with the German constitution. And the German constitution has an amendment basically saying that the government is not allowed to go heavily into debt. It's called the uh, Schuldenbremse, which is like the debt break uh, in Germany. And so the discussion in Germany is whether the this adherence to that debt break is actually con like really problematic for the country because the country might be missing out on important future oriented investments. My understanding And was that um basically they set up like a special how do you call yes. it Sondervermögen. Yeah yeah so they yeah they came up with a special budget. With yeah a special budget, budget for uh, yeah. Bundeswehr uh, you remember Olaf Scholz Zeitenwende and then the German constitutional court our highest court comparable to the US Supreme Court Deutsches Bundesverfassungsgericht said uh uh that's not working and they already yeah. committed and spent a lot of this money so basically yeah. damn was when the finances got in trouble and they tried to scrape the money by everywhere including um subsidies on fuels for uh, farmers and stuff like this. That's why you, s you have seen all the protests with the tractors and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think one definitely has to say, yeah, they do have a point in terms of process because obviously it was a bit weird that the government said, oh yeah, okay, then we will just create a special budget for uh, climate causes or a special budget for the military. And then it's not part of the whole overall budget anymore. And basically the um, Supreme Court said, well, this practice is not really valid. And if the constitution says you're not allowed to go in depth, then you can't also, then you can't go in depth also for the, for these special projects, because in the end, they are part of what the taxpayers have to pay for. So, but nevertheless, you can still argue whether the mechanism in and of itself saying, well, we have this debt break and we're gonna hold on to it, uh, makes sense or not, or whether it should be abandoned. But in order to abandon it, you would need a two thirds majority in Bundestag. And right now it uh, doesn't look likely that uh, two thirds of the representatives in Bundestag would be able to agree on it. Anyway, thanks for coming to that TED talk. Last thing about uh, ecosystem in Germany is about mergers and acquisitions. Experts look for 2024 for more takeovers and acquisitions in Germany. 22 was weak, 23 was even weaker. So now the hopes are a bit higher. It's another article we link to in our show notes. Moving on to specific cities, the hub section, starting with you in Frankfurt. Chris, I will not start to sing, but you know what always goes through my mind when we talk about it was a very bad year? The song from Frank Sinatra where he sings it was a very good year. <laughs> it always goes through my mind when we talk about that. But going to the hub section, here we want to highlight hidden gems starting in Frankfurt Rhein-Main. Intertech Unicorn Clark, where we had Christopher, the founder, already twice in interview, gives up the Austrian market. The former CEO for Austria takes over the business in a management buyout and Link 11, uh, Link 11, uh, Frankfurt am Main, Germany based specialized IT security provider, raises more than 26 million euros in funding. On the sad news here, obituary, we are very sad to inform you that Professor Philip Santner, a frequent guest and one of the main evangelists of blockchain in the German speaking academia has passed away. He founded a blockchain center at Frankfurt School and he was an expert consulted in the, um, by the German government in law on, on tokenization of securities that he talked about on our podcast as well as a member of the FinTech Rat, meaning the FinTech Advisory Board for the federal government. Uh, we just met with him before the holidays and now he is gone, passed away with just 43 years. He leaves a wife and two kids. Multiple newspapers and blogs announced his death, but the cause of death was not given. <sighs> Sad news. Aachen, 5 million euros for wastewater recycling company Mimion. Um, deep tech and climate tech funds invest Magdeburg, Magdeburg based AIOT startup Infinite Devices is rescued by investor Infinite 
AI Audio. I know it confused me also a lot. Hamburg Air Focus based in Hamburg raises 7.5 million US dollar in venture capital and Karlsruhe. That's a small city, but one should notice because as we said before, it has a world class technical university. It is home to Inter at Tech Inera Tech and they raised 118 million euros in Series B funding for the e fuels from 14 different investors. Among those investors are Samsung Ventures, TDK Ventures, our former guest Splendid A Ventures, and HTGF. And now we come to a very special place that even Chris admitted did not know. Norda Worden. Yes, um, it's still a little bit of different news, but very important. I have not known that this town existed at all. It has a population of 282 people. Um, and it is here for a reason because this town was the last one who would have been able to block the 4.5 billion, yes, billion with a B, your investment of North World in the Battery Factory. We cover the announcement in our news. They voted three to four in favor of the project. So it threw four voices in, uh, four votes in favor and it can go ahead and create 3000 new jobs. The vote just took place yesterday. The factory is one of the largest industrial investments in recent German history and should start production of new batteries as well as the recycling of old ones in 2026. And I think during the announcement, we already said the German federal government invested 560 million euros. The state of Schleswig-Holstein, one of the German states, invested 130 million euros, plus there are subsidies of more than 800 million euros involved as well. <sighs> Enough said about Norderwürden. Chris, you want to take over Austria? Yeah, and in Austria, we have news from a Vienna-based company. It's a food startup called Anovona, um, and they won Salzburg Milch, so Salzburg Milk, as a strategic investor with a 9.2 million euro funding for um, what is their protein drink brand, Muki. Muki is like muscle, muscle and um, yeah, so they are trying to get protein shakes into supermarkets. And in Switzerland, we saw that the Zurich-based AI startup Unique raised an additional 5.6 million Swiss francs after raising 4 million US dollars last year for further development of their Azure and OpenAI-based AI platform. And Swiss Rivero raised nine, $7 million for its payment, simplifying software as a service solutions. And the highly praised multi-award winning Swiss startup Nomoko has some bad news they filed for insolvency. Moving on to more general news, um, which is always our section where we include some news we deem relevant for more established companies as well. Um, for example, we found more news about new funds in case uh, some of you guys are looking for investors. EIT, Inno Energy, and Demeter, they launched a 500 million euro European battery and raw materials fund. And OpenAI backer Thrive Capital plans a $3 billion fundraise. Keep in mind, this fund is not yet raised. It will take time, but probably it's worth to keep an eye on. FinTech News, and you. Introtech startup GetSafe buys market leader for student loans in Germany, Deine Studienfinanzierung. Yes, we love the easy names. Dutch Anycoin Direct gets BaFin license here in Germany. And Burnham-based fintech Lemon Markets obtains security trading license from BaFin as well. Chris, handing over to General News. Yeah, it's back and forth here. In general news, the job cuts keep coming in the German tech scene. Uh, this time, German Handelsblatt, like the German FT, reports about hundreds of jobs to be cut in the Berlin-based headquarter of Delivery Hero. Manager Magazine writes that tier mobility flees in merger with Rival Dot. And Aleph Alpha hires a new VP for strategy and communications from Palantir. Um, talking about change and creative destruction you found yes. an article there 
Schumpeters schöpferische Zerstörung, exactly, the creative destruction, as Schumpeter called it, a cold shower for capitalism. The blog Deutsche Startups compiled a list of 100 startups that failed in 2023. Totally worth reading it because there's a small chapter going th uh, through the business model, what each and every startup did. Chris, we want to end on a high note, don't we? Yeah, I'm <laughs> taking over one last time. So um, we always have a little section on successful fundraising and exits. Keep in mind, there's just a small selection. Um, the news here and their total value show how resilient the startup scene is. So as you just said, we want to end on a high note. We included only selected fundraisings about five above 5 million euros or US dollars. And we also included some positive outlooks for 2024 here to keep the news in an upbeat mo mood. Um, one article we found focuses on what 2024 does hold for AI in Europe. We have some founders and investors predictions there. And then an article following a year of frustration, European tech welcomes 2024 with cautious optimism. And as I said, Berlin startup, uh, Pliant adds 8 million euros to a Series A round and secures a 100 million euro debt facility. Um, it's a fintech company. You can find more about that in our show notes from Tech EU. That all just leaves me to say we will be back on February 29th with the next episode and the next regular episode will go live next week. Um, we have some news to stay ahead of the curve, um, especially uh, you did some gathering on the global European and German startup scene in a deep dive. As always, we are looking for ways to make the show better. We have a Google form where you can tell us what you want to hear. And... Um, that just leaves me to say from what has become a really gray New York, but which can also just be due to me not having cleaned the windows properly. Um, but I will say goodbye. <laughs> it's, as always, a pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Goodbye, guys. Have a good Bye. one. Bye-bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io Remember, sharing is caring.